All right, it's the fourth and finale episode of growing bok choy from seeds. As you can see from these flower buds, more flowers are on the way. They're beautiful in their own right. They're small yellow and the plants in general and their growth just remind me a lot of wild mustard, another brassica genus species. So we have these little pea pods. They look like pea pods or bean pods growing. Um, Pretty much at an acute angle pointed upwards. It's day 57 and you can see honeybees do visit sporadically. Uh, there are days where I don't see any honeybees and also days in which they're very busy and they even come in the afternoon when this is all enshrouded in shade. So that means they don't need direct bright sunlight to find everything and I'm pretty sure they have this region mapped out and maybe they even somehow mark the plants that are about to flower weeks in advance so it's always very fun to watch honeybees uh, foraging at your flowers and as you can see the tops of these very tall inflorescences are still flowering so the plants have experienced what's called bolting a real risk in many crop species such as this one in which either high temperatures or long day lengths we did have a very brutal heat wave recently will cause plants to um, start flowering and become lanky with these inflorescences and just send out flowers and produce seeds as quickly as possible also if resources are very limited and the plants are cramped and we've had most of those conditions I can guarantee that so that explains why these have bolted instead of devoting more resources and time to growing vegetatively and sending out um, just big lush leaves like most bok choy that we know and eat. So the bean pods um, seem to have all these little peas in them. So it's very interesting. I can't wait to see what's inside of those. But for the time being, uh, I think I'll let this run for a while been very interesting feeding the local bees. I know early on I expected this plant growing series to end in 30 days or I could have started harvesting in 30 days. I could have but I decided once I saw the flower buzz just to let everything happen because um, not every plant series has to necessarily follow a fixed path towards harvest if something that I think interesting is happening or if I want to do some interesting experiments, I'll just go with that. So I haven't fertilized at all. Um, the growth you saw was basically from that wild California clay soil. The potting mix that I mixed it in was probably pretty depleted by past plant growing series in just all that time. So blending mango seeds in water and then pouring that on top. Um, the idea is that the nutrients in the mango seeds which should be very complete in terms of uh, being a source of nutrition for plants should then start to decompose fairly quickly and then every time I water from the top nutrients should trickle down as broken down by all the fungi perhaps more so than bacteria so I haven't fertilized until now I'm just washing off the blender and getting the rest of the very rich ground up seed in there. So the purpose of fertilizing this late in the game is twofold. I wanted to see if I could boost leaf production even if just temporarily and failing that I wanted to be able to enrich the soil by mixing this dried out mango seed smoothly crossed in with the clay soil and the potting mix that these are growing in for the next plant growing series. That's something I haven't tried yet. Hopefully it should make the soil a lot richer. I know I've been subscribing to this theory that you should just fertilize on top and water and get the nutrients down and there shouldn't be rotting stuff down in there but I want to see what happens if you mix it in there. So it's day 69 and despite my efforts and all the watering everything sort of spread out and you can tell that these are at the end of their life cycles. Um, the bottoms of these stems are very thin compared to the fleshier tops going up one or two inches or a few centimeters. 
So upon pulling these out, I realized that the root systems are surprisingly small, despite the density of these bok choy plants. We have about the same number that we started with. Uh, the roots only go about an inch in any direction. Um, despite the close proximity, the density by which I planted these things um, next to each other, I think the root systems could have been a lot more developed. And that explains why these seem to sag every few days, um, despite me thinking there was enough water. Well, upon inspection here, the soil doesn't seem that wet. Maybe the water all ran deeper. So at this point, it's mostly a harvest of pea pods rather than leaves. And I'm thinking for the next plant growing series, I'm going to get all these stems and leaves ripped off and mixed in there as well along with the mango seed smoothie that's dried out on top which is hardly noticeable at this point so let's find out what happened down there the bottom few leaves the earliest leaves true leaves all shriveled up and i can use those as organic spacers and mix them in there to give it some more aeration for the next plant growing series and upon doing this i found out that the clay soil had hardened considerably. It's not like sun-dried brick, but at the same time, it's pretty hard. It requires a lot of strength to break this up, which is obviously not good for root expansion. So that just means after the first few waterings, if you go back to episodes one and two, there are periods where it seems sort of muddy on top, appearance of uh, clay soil being wet for the first time. Now, granted, most of it still is potting mix, but the clay really congeals and it hardens. So there are other theories as to um, what you should mix um, to create a potty mix or mix with soil. Some people say sand and other people say if you mix sand with clay uh, and wet it after it dries out it becomes as hard as cement. So as you can see the roots are very underdeveloped and small. That explains why uh, water uptake was not the greatest. Maybe that all contributed to the bolting. And you can see my grand pea harvest. So later on, I'm going to peel these apart and show you what's inside. And we still have some flowering going on and some of the inflorescences branched out a little bit. So there are probably thousands of what I suspect will be peas in these little pods. Um, it's quite interesting. I didn't expect something from the brassica genus to do this. I thought legumes made peas and brassica are not legumes. But whatever, we have these small pea pods. And as you can see, the more immature ones have these white, more translucent peas. And I'm going to try to mash some of these up to show you what happens when you do so and get a feel for the consistency. Uh, we'll look at several of these little things. But the, the seeds are quite a surprise. So um, I've never quite grown anything that produced pea pods. So uh, this is the first for me. And we'll see what happens. Uh, definitely these seeds don't look like what we saw in episode one in the seed packet that I bought from Lowe's, a big box store. So when you mash these up, of course there's fluid inside and they do have the consistency that you'd expect when you pinch a pea from the supermarket and mash it up like that. It's very interesting. We have uh, thousands or maybe even over 10,000 miniature peas. So let me get some more. Um, the original seeds were in the seed packet were they were black. If you go back and look and they were dried out and thus lightweight and hard, they would roll around. So that's what I assume is the natural progression here. Most of my peas seem to be on the lighter side, so they're immature and undeveloped. I don't know if they'll become mature if you've already pulled them out and detached them from their energy and water sources. So that basically concludes my plant growing series in less than 70 days. I've carried these through one entire life cycle. Uh, some of you 
would like to see me plant the seeds and start a new generation, but I don't see the point in that. I'm in this to produce YouTube plant growing videos, um, not to be farming professionally or even to supply myself with food. It would just be too slow and inefficient. So I have limited space, time, and energy to make these plant growing series. So I'm going to use this pot for growing honey mango next. Honey mango is a smaller type of mango. I got a seed to germinate beautifully indoors and I'm going to transplant it into this pot soon. So aside from all these peas, which I've been careful to separate from all the other organic detritus, the stems, the leaves, and roots, um, I'm going to mix all of that stuff in there to provide more spacing and aeration because as we just saw in the last five minutes, the clay soil congeals and becomes very hard. So that hopefully will help alleviate the problem and I've decided to also try to mix in the mango seed smoothie which I haven't done before into the soil mass. So I'm thinking it will work out really well. Um, stay tuned to my YouTube channel to see that next series which will probably be coming out in just a few days. So thanks for watching my plant series about growing bok choy from seeds. And I look forward to producing lots of fresh new content for you for the rest of 2018.